What's going on YouTube? So you've got a Nintendo Wii and you want to unlock its full potential from custom channels to safety tools to launching games right from your menu. In this video, I'll show you how to mod your Nintendo Wii with ease using Mod Me and then how to convert your game files so you can play them seamlessly using USB Loader GX. By the end, your Wii will be faster, safer, and completely customized, ready for homebrew, emulators, and your favorite games right from a USB drive or SD card. Let's start the show off with what you will need to download. Download the following before we begin. First, you will need Mod Me. If you're using an SD card or a USB drive that is bigger than 32 gigabytes, you will need FAT32 GUI formatter. Now you can extract things directly from your Windows computer, but I like to use 7-zip, so you can get that from 7-zip.org forward slash download dot html. And last but not least, you will want Wii GSC. You can get that from www.wehacks.guide forward slash Wii GSC dot HTML. Now, ModMe is a modern all-in-one tool that automates almost every step of the Wii modding process. In the past, you had to manually install exploits, patch menus, and format SD cards. ModMe does all of that automatically, safely, and quickly. Soft mod any Wii, Wii U, or virtual Wii. It's beginner friendly, but powerful enough for advanced users, making it one of the best tools to use for homebrew setups. Before you touch your Wii, you'll need an SD card, ideally eight gigabytes or larger. If your SD card is larger than 32 gigabytes, you will need to format it with a formatting tool. Like I mentioned, you can get the FAT32 GUI format tool. I used a 128 gigabyte SD card for my Wii with about 40 games downloaded onto the SD card. They take up around 60 gigabytes of space. So keep that in mind if you're looking to just use the SD card for your modded Wii for your software and games. If you want, you can use an external hard drive or a USB stick. Double check your Wii's date and time are accurate. This will help prevent exploit issues later. Then insert your SD card into your PC. We'll format it to FAT32, which ensures compatibility with your Wii system. When you launch the ModMe installer, your antivirus might flag it. Don't worry, it's basically a false positive. ModMe edits Wii system files, which sometimes confuses security software, but it's completely safe if you get it from the official website. Once it's downloaded, run ModMe and we'll start setting things up. With your SD card formatted and inserted, open up ModMe. The wizard will ask what kind of console you are using. Select Wii, a virtual Wii, or a Wii U. Just go ahead and type W. Then input your Wii's system version. You can find that in your Wii's setting under system information. Also, once you are in the Wii setting as well, you can go ahead and find your Mac address. You will need that too. From here, ModMe will automatically download all the required files and place them correctly on your SD card. And that's it, you're ready to start modding. And then from here, just go ahead and choose which console you want to soft mod. I am using a regular Wii or an original Wii. So again, go ahead and hit W. If you're setting this up completely brand new, just go ahead and hit yes on this screen. You're basically installing all the recommended soft mods on your Wii. Now this is where it asks you for your system versions. So obviously if your Wii is all the way up to date, it should be at 4.3, which I believe would have been the last update for the Wii. So just go ahead and put in 4.3. And then the next one is gonna ask you for your region. I am in the US, obviously if you're in Europe, Japan, or Korea, you can go ahead and enter that. And on this one where it asks you which exploits you would like to use on your Wii, just go ahead and use Wii brand or letter bomb. Unless you're trying to install this without an SD card, but if you're using an SD card or a thumb drive or anything like that, just go ahead and hit W. Now this is going to ask you for your Mac address. That's why I said when you are in your settings, go ahead and find that and write it down because this is where you're going to enter that Mac address. This will make sure that everything goes onto your Wii. On this screen, just go ahead and hit no unless you already have a modded Wii. Again, you're just gonna go ahead and put in your system version again. And on this screen, it'll ask you what channels you want to install. You more than likely already have these on your Wii. You can go ahead and hit all, some, or none. And on this screen, it'll ask you if you want to install a custom Wii theme. Just go ahead and hit no. Would you like to set up USB loader now? Hit yes. And then just go ahead and hit one on this. And then on this screen, go ahead and just do, if you're using a USB thumb drive, type in USB. If you're using an SD card, type in SD. 
And on this screen, just go ahead and type in whatever your SD card or USB is named as. So for my SD card, it is titled as J. So just go ahead and enter whatever yours will be. At this point, it'll basically ask you to double check all this stuff and then just go ahead and begin download. So just go ahead and hit Y for this and it'll basically install everything onto your SD card and then you can take that over to your Wii and we can begin the process. Take your SD card and insert it back into your Wii at this point. Follow ModMe's on-screen instructions. It will automatically trigger the exploits. After a few quick steps, you'll see the homebrew channel appear on your Wii's menu. This is your new app launcher. This place is where you'll find all of your homebrew tools, emulators, and utilities. Before you move on, back up your system files, your NAND.bin and your key.bin. These backups can restore your system if something ever goes wrong. And to install the mod me, go ahead and click your messages down here in the bottom right hand corner. You're going to want to go ahead and either go forward a couple of days or go back a couple of days. You'll find an envelope with a bomb in it. And that bomb basically installs your mod me and homebrew channels and all that stuff. Go ahead and click it. This screen right here, just go ahead and let it sit for about a minute or so. And then it'll ask you to go ahead and continue. Don't like reset the Wii or anything. Just give it a minute. And then at the very bottom screen, you'll see it'll ask you to press one to continue. Go ahead and press one. And this screen will come up. Just hit a a couple of times. Go ahead and continue. Install the homebrew channel. Continue. Yes. And then go ahead and boot up boot me. Go ahead and install preloader installer. Hit the plus button. Hit A to exit back out of the loader. And then install load preloader. Once you have a boot to preloader, you can it'll then bring you into this menu. Go ahead and boot me iOS. At this point, you have to use the power button and the reset button on the console. The power button advances, the reset button enters. So go ahead and go all the way to the right to your cogwheels. Go ahead and hit your reset button on this green arrow SD card. This is basically going to create and back up your NAND, NAND.bin files and your key.bin files. This will take some time, so go ahead and uh, grab some popcorn and drink and watch the show. Once you're done, you can then go ahead and hit the arrow button all the way to the back and then click on the Wii icon that'll bring you back out to your regular system. Go back into your homebrew channel and go to USB Loader GX. Now when you load up USB Loader GX, You'll see at the very bottom, just go ahead and hit A to enable the SD card mode. This is just to ensure that USB Loader GX reads from the SD card. And from here, you can find all of your Wii ROMs. If you're connected to the internet and you see that box art is missing, you can go ahead and click it. Make sure all the cover downloads are checkmarked and then just go ahead and hit OK. This will download all of your missing box art. And you're pretty much done with all that. So we went ahead and modded it. Now let's go ahead and talk about how to make custom channels. So if you want to make your Wii look and feel seamless using YOM, yet another WAD manager mod, you can install custom channels and game forwarders such as shortcuts that launch games directly from your Wii menu. You want Mario Kart Wii or Smash Bros right on your home screen? This is how you do it. Just remember some titles like A Boy and His Blob or Mario Party 9 can cause errors if converted incorrectly. So always double check the compatibility list. So to create these forwarders, you've already downloaded the Wii Game Shortcut Creator or WGSC. Keep note of where the program folder gets installed. For example, C forward slash program files x86 or like C user, etc. We'll need that info in a minute. Go ahead to your download folder and find the Wii GSC folder that needs to be unzipped. Go ahead and unzip that. Once you have it unzipped, go ahead and make a desktop folder labeled WGCS or something like that. And then you're basically going to drag over from the unzipped folder, the setup and Wii GSC installer to the desktop app. Go ahead and launch the Wii GSC installer. 
find the folder that the program was installed to and open it up. Scroll down to find the wide Wii folder. Open that and look for the file named wegsc.ex. Run it as an administrator. Select your SD card or USB drive and choose your game. Wii GSC generates a WAD file that acts as a shortcut. Then move that WAD to your SD card, install it through WAM, and boom. That game now launches directly from your Wii menu. It's clean, simple, and super convenient. And last but not least, if you have to convert an ISO file to a Wii formatted game, let's go ahead and convert some ISO files to WBFS. So your Wii is modded, your loaders are installed, but what if your game is an ISO format? USB Loader GX doesn't recognize ISO files. It needs to be a WBFS file instead. That's where Wii Backup Manager comes in. Now, if you used Mod Me, Wii Backup Manager should already be on your desktop. Open it up and select your ISO file as the input. Then choose your USB or SD card as the destination. Click transfer and then it will convert it to a WBFS format. The program starts converting your game. Depending on the file size, it can take a few minutes, so be patient. Once you're done, you'll see your game appear in a WBFS format. You're ready to play on USB Loader GX. Just make sure it's stored inside a proper WBFS folder structure. Also, something I want to make very apparent, you have to make sure that your game just has the game ID number .wbfs. Sometimes USB Loader GX doesn't recognize it with the name in front of the game ID number, so just go ahead and delete it. Basically, you just want the game ID number .wbfs for to load properly. And there you have it, the complete step-by-step -step guide to modding your Wii with ModMe, setting up custom channels, and converting your ISO files for perfect gameplay. If you guys like this video, go ahead, give it a thumbs up, give it a like. If you didn't like this video, also give it a thumbs up. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit all the buttons. I'm Jordan, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace. Cooking up dope with a oozing. My niggas are savage, ruthless. We got thudders and hundred rounds too. My bitch is bad, losing bad. Cooking up dope with a